Um, I'd like for you to take your Bibles just for a few minutes tonight. Uh, many of you tomorrow are uh, going to be going to school, going to work. And I want us to go into the week prepared. How about you? We never know what we're going to face uh, each and every day. And boy, in the world we're living in, that, that is so true. We don't know what's coming. But I want to go into the week prepared. I want to go into the week with a right frame of mind. Amen? And I want to title this message just for a few minutes tonight. Don't believe everything you think. <laughs> Don't believe everything you think. Now, I know many of you think if it's on social media, it's got to be true. I want to begin tonight. Uh, take your Bibles. First uh, Samuel chapter 27. In the Old Testament tonight, First Samuel chapter 27. Now, now just stay there for a while. We're going to get there eventually, but I want to begin with kind of some introductory thoughts. Um, how many of you have ever heard of what they call a rogue wave? Okay, not a rogue driver. We have plenty of those. But a rogue wave. They're also known as uh, monster waves, freak waves, episodic waves. They are usually um, large, unexpected, suddenly appearing surface waves that have known to be even to sink ships. Um, there, I have a photo. Um, this is, I know it's probably hard to see, but in November of 2020, a freak wave came up out of the blue off the coast of British Columbia. It was measured by a buoy that, that was lifted up 58 feet. The four-story wall of water was finally confirmed in 2022 as the most extreme rogue wave ever recorded at that time. They say that such an exceptional event is thought to occur only once every 1,300 years. And it was only because of the buoy that was in the water that they've known how high the wave got. They are extremely dangerous, and they can appear to come out of nowhere. Now, I know what you're thinking. What in the world does this have to do with me? All right, let me ask you the question. How many of you have ever had a crazy thought come into your mind? Some of you, you're, you're thinking things right now. Have, has something ever come into your mind and you stopped and went, where did that come from? You know what I'm talking about. We call them rogue thoughts. And as believers, we'll, we'll have these moments where a thought will come into our mind. It could be an unhealthy thought. It could be an unproductive thought. And we think, where did that come from? I'm a Christian. I, I love God. I love the Word. I'm filled with the Spirit. Where did this come from? It could be a, a hateful thought. It could be an ugly thought, right? Yeah. And you think, where did that... Am I the only one that experiences these things? Yeah. Okay, there's a couple of you. <laughs> let, me, let me encourage you tonight. Number one, don't, don't beat your, yourself up too bad. Good people can have bad thoughts. And I'll explain in a moment. Godly people can have ungodly thoughts, right? And you think about what we're bombarded with every single day. You think of the messages we hear. We think of the, the images that, that, are, that, that come to our minds. As a matter of fact, there's a, a passage. Um, do you remember Abraham's nephew Lot who ended up living in Sodom and Gomorrah? There, there's an interesting passage, and I want to show it to you. It's in 2 Peter chapter 2. And the Bible says that God delivered, and notice what the Bible refers to Lot as, righteous. With me? And God delivered righteous Lot, who is oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked. Remember, he's in Sodom and Gomorrah. For that righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. In other words, Lot, because of where he lived, was bombarded in his mind, in his thoughts by what he saw every day. 
But the Bible still calls him a godly man. And how many of you know he barely made it out of their life? Well, we live in Sodom and Gomorrah. Let's just say it like it is. Okay, we're not going to candy coat it tonight. And so we are bombarded every day with images and words and messages. A.W. Tozer, the great writer, said 10,000 thoughts a day will pass through our minds and they will try to predict what we will become. How many of you know our thoughts are powerful? They can affect the direction of our lives. They can affect our attitude. They can affect our emotions. They can even affect your health. Amen. Um, Abraham Lincoln said one time, he said, I want to explain this. It's, it's not a play on words. He said, I am not a man. I am a civil war. Now, he wasn't talking about the literal civil war. What he was talking about is this constant battle in our minds. This constant battle of trying to get a hold of our thoughts. Amen. We all battle this. And here's my point tonight. Church, if we don't learn to reclaim rogue thoughts that come into our minds, those thoughts will become actions and lead us down a dangerous and destructive path. You see tonight, I know you know this, your mind, your thought is the devil's battleground. Amen? Our mind is our battleground. So we're going to get, I told you, we're going to get to 1 Samuel. But let me explain to you where rogue thoughts come from in our lives. Even as godly, God-fearing people. Where do these crazy thoughts come from? Well, I jotted down several things. Number one, obviously, experiences that we've all had. Okay? Um, it can be things that happened to us in the past, right? They can be things that um, happened to us in our marriage. Whatever it may be, those experiences that we've gone through plant thoughts in our minds. Come on. Okay, you get cut off in traffic. Don't tell me you don't have some thoughts. Right? I, oh, can I confess something? I have a very, very low tolerance for bad drivers. Anybody else? Thank you. I appreciate your honesty. And I am really bad. Sheila has to get on to me. Um, I'm really bad when I get behind somebody who's just being a jerk on the road because that's what God put horns for on cars. And I want to lay on my horn. Anybody else? Or, or like when, when somebody from out of Tucson comes here and, and, you know, in the left turn lane, we get the leading arrow. I mean, I mean we get the last arrow. Got to get that right. Well, people who come here many times are used to the left arrow being the leading arrow. So they don't know... And at the end, they get the left arrow, and they're still sitting there. Come on, anybody else like me just want to lay on your horn? And Sheila will go, Peter, you're a Christian. But we have things happen to us that will plant and lodge thoughts in our minds. Am I not telling the truth? Encounters, things that we hear, things that we see every day, whether it be in the media or on social media, or on the TV, or in a movie, those images and those words get lodged in our brain, right? Engagements. I'm not talking about marriage engagement. I'm just simply talking about conversations we have. Has somebody ever said something to you, made you so mad that you wanted to get even? Okay. Conversations. Our environment, the culture we live in, which we've already talked about. And lastly, emotions. We all have emotions. And sometimes our emotions can get worked up and thoughts come into our... Come on. It can be fears or anxiety. It can be jealousy or anger. It can be bitterness, pride. It can even be just from physical exhaustion. But that, that's why we need to take care of our health. Amen? So we have all of these things coming at us. And the battleground is right here. How can you and I learn to capture those thoughts so that they don't become rogue thoughts. Well, let's go to 1 Samuel. So this is about David, a man after God's own heart. David has been anointed as king over Israel, though he hasn't taken the crown yet. Remember, he's been on the run from King Saul, who has sought to kill him. In the 26th chapter 
some amazing things happened to David. I'm not going to go into all the, all the story, but basically God supernaturally protected David from Saul killing him. And we get to chapter 27, and something happens in David's mind. Something triggers a thought that's going to take David in a very different direction. I'd like for you to look at chapter 27, verse 1. Now, I'm reading from the New King James, and it says, David said in his heart. Do y'all see that? Okay, one translation says, David said to himself. Another translation says, David thought to himself. Are you all with me? So David gets this thought. Now I shall perish someday by the hand of Saul. There is nothing better for me than that I should speedily escape to the land of who? The Philistines. And Saul will despair of me to seek me anymore in any part of Israel. So shall I escape out of his hands. David, where did that thought come from? God has already protected you. God has already miraculously kept his hand on you. Some say he was exhausted from running. Some say he was just depressed. I don't know. But some thought God, and I want to look at him and say, David, have you lost your ever-loving mind? You want to leave and go to the Philistines? Do y'all remember who belonged to the Philistines? Goliath! David gets this, what we would call a harebrained idea, that I need to flee and go to the enemy's camp. I'm going to tell you something, y'all. If we don't guard our thoughts, it will lead us into places we don't need to be. We'll make decisions we don't need to make. Come on. Y'all know when you're angry. <laughs> There are thoughts that you shouldn't have. Come on. And then look at verse number two. Then David arose and went over with 600 men who were with him to Ashish, the son of Maok, the king of who? This is what amazes me. David isn't like just going into some subtle territory of the Philistines, some corner where nobody knows where he's at. He goes to Gath. Guess who was from Gath? Goliath. Do you remember when the Bible describes Goliath? He says, Goliath of Gath. I'm looking at David going, David, what are you doing? What's happened, church? Is David allowed what we call a rogue thought to make a crazy decision to go into the enemy's camp? Again, if you don't learn... To reclaim those rogue thoughts, it will take you to places you don't want to go. Do you know what happened? David lost a year and a half of his life because he went to the land of the Philistines. Look over in chapter 27, verse 7. Now the time that David dwelt in the country of the Philistines was one full year and four months. Not quite a year and a half. David lost because of this rogue thought that I need to run and I need to flee to the enemy's territory. But that wasn't it. Go over to chapter 30. And I, and I hope you hear my heart tonight. In chapter 30, you know the story that while David was gone, while David was away, it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and attacked Ziklag and burned it with fire. And had taken captive the women and those that were there from small to great. They did not kill anyone, but they carried them away and went their way. And David and his men came to the city, and there it was, burned with fire. And their wives and their sons and their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives, Ahinoam the Jezreelitess and Abigail the widow of Nabal, Carmelite had been taken captive, and David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him. Because of the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. Now we know that David encouraged himself in the Lord. I understand that. 
But let me, let me explain to you. All of the trouble that David encountered began with a rogue thought. Do you understand that? His wives being taken captive, his children being taken captive, the, the distress among the people that they're now ready to stone David, they're, 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 they're soon to be king. Where did that all start? It all started when David had this thought. You know what? I better get out of here and run to the Philistines. Church, when you give in to wrong thoughts, when you give in to unhealthy thoughts, it doesn't just affect you. It affects your family and it affects the people closest to you. Come on. Now listen, it's not a sin when a wrong thought or an evil thought even comes into your mind. But it does become sin when you allow it to remain to the point that you start making decisions on that thought. Come on. And so we must learn and ask God to help us not let those thoughts, those bad thoughts, unhealthy thoughts, unproductive thoughts, cause us to make decisions that give us trouble. Amen? So how can you and I, and believe it or not, I'm almost done. I, I know you don't believe it. So when I look at David's story and all that he went through because of that one decision, because of a thought, how can you and I reclaim rogue thoughts that come into our minds? Because let's admit it, they do, don't they? Okay? And, I, and I'm not even going to try to go into what different kinds of thoughts you may have. I think we're all grown up enough to know what we're talking about. I'm going to share number one. To help overcome unhealthy, hurtful, whatever thoughts we were talking about. Number one, we need to confess the thought. And I want to explain that. We need to confess those thoughts to someone. You say, what do you mean? David never shared that thought with anyone. David kept silent about something he should have shared with someone. And I pose the question to you, what would have happened if David maybe gathered a couple of his trusted men? What would have happened if David had gathered maybe some of his closest advisors and shared with them this thought that he had about running off to the Philistines? Is it possible that maybe he could have saved himself some trouble because somebody might have pulled him back and said, David, that's not a wise idea. Is it not true that sometimes we get those thoughts and because we don't share them with someone, they're allowed to germinate in our minds? But if we share it with someone we trust, it gets it out in the open. Let me, let me teach you something. Satan always operates where there's secrets and darkness. That's why Jesus said we're to walk in the light. Amen? Now let me take you to an interesting verse. How many know that verse in James 5 where it says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much? Have you all quoted that before? Did you know that's not the whole verse? That's only the last half. Can I show you the whole verse? You know I'm going to do it anyway. Confess your trespasses, King James says, faults to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective fervent prayer. That's the whole verse. Everybody understand that? Is it possible that we've been looking at that verse all wrong? Some people think that we ought to just go out and confess all our sins to the whole world. I don't think that's a good idea. Okay? But is it possible that thoughts get started and because we don't take time to share with someone what we're struggling with, it opens the door to making some poor decisions? Is it possible that what James is telling us that when you're struggling with something, that maybe we ought to go to someone, obviously someone mature, someone we trust, someone who, someone who really knows God, and share with them what we're struggling with, what we're doing 
is we are incorporating help, assistance, and aid with that thought. Amen? Is it not true that we fight better together? Two are better than one, and a threefold cord is not easily broken? And I know that requires us to be vulnerable, but sometimes, let me talk to husbands and wives, sometimes in our marriages we get thoughts. Come on, let's just be real. Boy, everybody just got quiet. Did you hear that, Tyler? Just, he's getting too close to my territory. But sometimes as husbands, we, 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 we get thoughts about our wives. What would happen if we just sat down and said, hey, I'm, I'm having these thoughts. I, just, I want to pray with you. I, I believe too often we give thoughts way too much room to operate. Get it in the light. Share it with the pastor. Share uh, I don't want that to come out wrong. But, but what, what sharing it with someone, confessing to someone, maybe some thoughts that you're struggling with, what it does is it gets it out of the darkness, into the light. Honesty brings healing. Honesty brings healing. And if you're, if you're battling with depression, and you're having thoughts of suicide, what's the first thing they tell you? Talk to someone. Amen. Talk to someone you trust. Who has a relationship with God. Amen. And whatever it may be. Confess. Confess that thought to someone. For advice and counsel. And sometimes it can help you. Spare you from making a bad decision. Amen. Amen. Number two. Cast the thought. And I won't be long on this. But cast the thought. Nowhere in our text with David. Does it say David prayed about it it just says David said in his heart I better run for my life and I'm going to go to the Philistines it never says he prayed about it how many of you have made bad decisions simply because you didn't pray about it let me tell you what Peter said Peter said casting all your care upon him why because he cares for you but be sober and be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith. There is a reason 7, 8, and 9 are linked together. Church, when you begin to get an evil thought, when you begin to get an impure thought, when you begin to have an unhealthy thought, immediately take it to God in prayer. Stop what you're doing, because if you don't, you are opening the door for your adversary to wreak havoc. Immediately, take Jesus, help me, Jesus, Jesus, help me, amen? You see, the sooner you take it to the Lord, the sooner you can prevail over that thought. And as someone said, if you don't take control of your thoughts, your thoughts will take control of you. The Bible says, cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. Make it a matter of prayer. Say, God, I'm, I'm just be honest. God, I'm str struggling with this thought. I don't know why I'm thinking it, but God, I need you to help me. Holy Spirit, you're the one that lives in me. Give me strength. Give me guidance. Come on. Turn to your neighbor and say, pray about it. Talk to God about it. Amen. Cast the thought, cast it on God. Number three, this is much tougher, but capture the thought. Capture the thought. There is a, you know this verse probably pretty well, but in 2 Corinthians, Paul talks about the spiritual war that we all deal with. And Paul says, though we walk in the flesh, we live in this flesh, we operate function in the flesh, we don't fight, we don't war according to the flesh or in fleshly terms, okay? For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Does anybody want to guess where most strongholds get started? Right here. That is exactly right. He said, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing, listen, any thought 
that is contrary to God's word, to God's truth, is a thought that must be taken captive. Any thought that is in um, direct, uh, I want to say disobedience, or contrary to the word of God or the things of God, he said, bring it in to captivity to the obedience of Christ. Now, what does that mean, that we're to bring thoughts into captivity? Let me explain to you. When something is in captivity, it's not free to roam around. And I may know that's what thoughts do. Come on, let me ask you, have you ever gotten mad and the more you thought about it, the madder you got? Okay, we're all in this together, aren't we? And so we have to learn to bring those thoughts into captivity so they're not allowed to roam freely. You say, well, pastor, I can't do that. I just can't stop these thoughts from coming and messing with me. First of all, I believe we can if we're intentional about it. Okay? I heard this quote years ago, and I've never forgotten it. You say, well, Pastor, I, I, I hear all this stuff every day, and I'm around these workers every day, and, and it just gets to me, and I can't handle it. I just can't help it. This quote says, you may not be able to stop the buzzards from flying over your head, but you don't have to let them build a nest in your hair. <laughs> Is that not classic? I realize that we can't control the, all of the things that we hear or all the things that we see. But in Jesus' name, I do have authority over what I choose to think about. And there are times that I have to recognize this is not a healthy thought. I have to recognize that this, is not, this thought is not from God. I've known people that have struggled with depression, thoughts of suicide. I mean, that is not from God. And you have to start recognizing this is not productive. This is not good. This is not healthy. Church, that's the time that you begin to rebuke it. That's the time you begin to resist it. This is not from God. This temple is the temple of the Holy Spirit, and I'm not going to dwell on that. Amen. Reject it in Jesus' name. Amen. If the Spirit of God is in you, he shall quicken your mortal bodies. Church, you don't have to let those thoughts run rampant in your mind. In James chapter 4, he said, therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and what will he do? He might flee. No, he will. Listen, as a child of God, when you are submitted to the lordship of Christ, you have authority over every evil thing. Amen? You are blood-bought. You are a child of God. And at some point, you have to take authority over those thoughts. He says, draw near to God. And what will God do? He'll draw near to you. And then he says, this is interesting. He says, cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify. Now watch this word. Purify your hearts. You double what? You double-minded. Right here. Church, when you're struggling with thoughts in your mind, those are the times that you have to take those thoughts into captivity and say, you are not allowed to run rampant in my mind. Amen? Let me give you number four and I'm done. Number four, cleanse the thought. Cleanse the thought. We confess it. We find someone that we can share it with. I'm really struggling with this. I'm, I'm having negative. I'm having um, hurtful thoughts, whatever it may be. Share it with someone you trust. There, you can, can now listen. Um, don't share it with someone who loves to post stuff on social media. Okay, just someone that you know will be confidential. But share it with someone to get it in the light. Someone can pray with you. Cast the thought on the Lord. Pray. Immediately when that thought comes in, you feel like cussing your boss out. Just stop and say, Jesus, help me. Yes. Jesus, 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 I need you right now. I want to slap them silly. Make sure my staff is not thinking any of that. <laughs> Capture the thought. Bring it into captivity. And number four, 
cleanse the thought. And this is one I think that we don't do enough. That we have to renew our minds every day. Listen to what Paul said to Ephesians. Be renewed in the spirit of your what? Your mind, your thoughts. And again, we're bombarded every day with garbage. We're bombarded every day with lies, right? And if we're not renewing our minds, it doesn't take long for our minds to go there. Romans 12, do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. This is a way that we cleanse our thoughts, is being renewed through the word of God, through prayer, amen? Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, noble, just, pure, lovely, of good report, if there's any virtue, any praise, think or meditate on what? What do you meditate on? What do you feed on? Because it has an effect. And lastly, Colossians 3, 2. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. So tonight, don't believe everything you think. Because not everything you think is good. Not everything you think is healthy. Let's just be honest. Amen. I think a part of that cleansing is there are times we need to remove things from our lives that are affecting us. I mean, if you're running with people who are liars, people who are mean, people who are hateful, it, it won't be long you'll take that on. Movies, music, material, whatever. Let me just put it this way. Change the channel. Change. Listen, there is no devil or demon in hell who can stop you from getting up and changing the channel. Okay? And also renew yourself in the Word of God, with God's people. Amen? Amen. Tyler, would you come back to the keyboard, please? Tonight, as believers... Our thought life is absolutely crucial to the rest of our lives. Satan can't read our minds, but he doesn't have to. We've already given him so much junk to work with, right? Tonight, as Christians, we are going to have crazy thoughts at times. Sometimes like a rogue wave out of nowhere. It's like, where did that come from? And we have to be ready for it. We have to be ready to tackle it before it causes us to make a bad decision. And tonight, I'm going to invite you to stand. I know there's a lot going on in our world right now with the elections coming up and the hostility, the vitriol, the, just the, the mudslinging. Man, it's enough to make you mad. Is it not true? But as believers, we have to keep ourselves under control. We have to keep ourselves in the love of God. And I'm going to invite you to bow your heads tonight. And I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand tonight, all right? So don't worry. But I am going to ask these questions. Maybe tonight you're here or you're watching online and you've been battling some wrong thoughts. You might be here tonight and you've been having some unhealthy thoughts Maybe revenge or retaliation. Maybe you're here and you've been having some ungodly thoughts lately. Maybe some things in your past are coming back to your mind and haunting you. Maybe you're here tonight and you've had unkind thoughts towards someone. Maybe unforgiving thoughts towards your spouse. Or maybe some untrue thoughts things that you know are not true and that's plaguing you. I'm here tonight to tell you that God wants to help you. God wants to help you. And all I'm going to invite you to do is just right where you are tonight, would you reach out to the Lord and say, God, God, help me tonight. Lord, help me in my mind. Lord, would you cleanse me? Purify my thoughts. Lord Jesus, I want to have a mind that is set upon you. I want to have a mind that is in line with your will. I want my thoughts to be pleasing to you. You said, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my 
heart or mind be acceptable to you. Lord, forgive me, Lord, if I've made decisions based on a wrong thought. Lord, even a man after your own heart did it. And I recognize how easy it is to do. Lord, I pray for every one of us tonight that you will help us guard our thoughts, our minds. I pray that not only by the things we listen to and watch, Lord, I pray that we would be renewed every day by the Holy Spirit to have thoughts that are pure and holy, thoughts that are kind and forgiving, thoughts that are patient and loving and merciful. And Lord, tonight I pray that before we ever make major decisions, Lord, I pray that we would make sure that our thoughts are right. I thank you for your word. Your word has the power to cleanse our minds. And I pray that you would just wash over us. Lord, if there is anyone here tonight who's struggling with depression, Lord, if there is anyone here tonight who's believed that lie, they're not worthy, that no one loves them, Lord, I pray right now, show them that is a lie. And I pray that the truth will set them free. Lord, I know that the enemy wreaks havoc in our thoughts. So tonight we ask you to cover our minds and help us to think rightly. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And all of God's people said amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise tonight. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let me, let me leave you with this, y'all. Satan can't read your mind, but God can. <laughs> All right? So turn to your neighbor and say, think good thoughts. Amen? Amen. We love you tonight. We thank you for coming out. Why don't you take a moment to bless someone, give someone a word of encouragement. We hope to see everybody back on Wednesday for family night. Have a wonderful night. Good night, church.